and welcome to Inspire Me Monday. I'm Allison Cope and today I'm your hostess. Today we are going to talk about digital images and how to paper piece them. Uh, yeah, you heard it, how to paper piece them. So we're going to make this card today and you're going to go from voila to voila. So join me in my scrap room. Away we go. All right, let's get to printing our image. Now, everybody's printer is a little bit different, so you kind of have to get to know your very own printer. This happens to be just an inkjet. And I'm going to start off by pulling out my paper tray here. And because my paper flips up and rotates in the machine, I'm actually going to mark my paper and I'm just going to put the words top. So I know which direction I need to put my paper in to print it again. So I'm going to go and send it off to the printer and away we go. So you can definitely use a laser printer. It doesn't matter what kind of printer you use to do this process. Um, I just happen to use my inkjet because number one, it uh, seems to take my paper through the, the tray a lot easier and my laser printer tends to curl my paper and I don't like that and that's just because of the heat process that it requires to do its job. So let's take this and apply some pattern papers. So now that we've got everything printed, now we get to take all of our fun pattern papers and apply them to our printed page and we're gonna send them through our printer once again. So I've picked a couple of choices of pattern papers. I'm going to use a background from the Lily of the Valley Knitwick collection uh, called Snow Princess. And I'm also going to use some bits and pieces from the piece Joy Love from Lawn Fawn. And this is a great way to use scraps, especially those little scrawny little ones like this. Perfect way to use these up. Now... I've already decided in my head that I am going to use a background pattern piece to initially start off um, my focal image on my card. So I am going to eventually uh, probably die cut this out. But for now, I want to print a very, very large uh, piece of this pattern paper. And we're going to put it over top this side. And then we're going to start adding our other colored pieces to this side. So I'm going to go cut a piece and then I'll show you how I generally adhere everything to make it stick to go through the printer. So I've cut a large square, larger than my image, and I like to use my basic uh, Scotch ATG gun. You can use whatever adhesive you'd like. Um, it can't be too bumpy and I wouldn't advise using a wet adhesive like um. Uh, glue or anything like that because you don't want to pass that through the rollers. I would use definitely a tape runner. Um, the other thing too that comes in handy at this point is, believe it or not, a bright light. So you should be able to put this up to a bright light and see the chickadee through your pattern paper, um, especially if it's a nice lightweight paper. You'd be surprised at how well you can see through these. Um, it also aids in making it kind of centered so you have enough uh, stuff to die cut in the end. So the next step, once that's going to be the background of the focal image, the next thing I want to do is I want to print out um, green for our leaves. So we're going to do the same thing. We are going to use some of our strips of paper. And you might have to do this multiple times to get full images, but you can use strips to the best of your ability and cut them down. You don't want to make things too bulky and you don't want to overlap them because the printer will not like you for it. So I'm going to do the same thing and add my adhesive over top of the area that I want to be printed green. So I see a leaf here and here and here so maybe we'll go kind of like this now see i have overlap here i don't want that so i'm just going to take my scissors and trim off that 
I'm going to pull in another kind of green paper here. I don't want to have all my leaves using the same pattern paper. It just makes it more whimsical that way. And of course, the larger your image, the easier this is to do because you have less cutting to do. So let's take our green polka dot. And I think we will capture the leaves up here. And I have this kind of very cool um, bokeh kind of pattern to it. I do see a leaf here and here. So what we may do is cut this down even more. Do a trial run here, right there. And this is why I did two images instead of one. It just saves you a trip through the printer. And we have a couple more up there. So let's do these up. Uh, this. And we'll place that over top our upper leaves. Once again, making sure that nothing is overlapping. And if you have any glue sticking out, make sure you get rid of that before you put it through your printer. So going back to our registration mark, see, look, my registration mark is actually on the back. So this just helps me to put it in the printer the correct way so that it prints out on those pattern papers. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to come back. All right, we're back and look, it's uh, already starting to evolve. We have our background image with our very, very subtle polka dot. And then we've got a variety of different greens. And again, if you need to do like, for instance, you might want to make that a leaf versus a berry, then go back and you add another, um, another piece of green paper or whatever color you need. These very easily peel right off and you can set them aside on your work surface, for the most part, their adhe adhesive will stick to them. So you can kind of piece it back together. So you kind of have an idea of as to where those leaves are coming from and where they need to go back on your picture. So I'm gonna take these off because I need to do um, some reds to go for our lovely little berries there. So I'm going to apply those quickly and then we will go on to the fussy part of the challenge here. That is to cut everything out. Let's go to the printer. There we go. And if I have to go back and print a few more pieces, I can absolutely do that. But now, going to peel these off and then we're going to get to the fun part <laughs> the piecing it all together the next thing you want to think about is layers so you want to work from the back up towards the front because obviously the last layers that you want to put on are the layers that appear on the top so for instance, right here, there's two little leaves and some snow. Well, you want the snow to appear to be on the leaves. Well, I'm going to fake it. Instead of actually cutting out, say, white cardstock in a snowy layer, I'm going to bring in a liquid applique, which basically, once heated with your heat tool, looks like snow. So I'm going to cheat, and it's going to be my final layer. But if you weren't going to do that and you were going to actually cut out a white layer for the snow, you need to make sure that you cut and you place down the layer specifically for your leaves first. Because it's the layer that is in the background and the snow is in the foreground. So you've got to think about what goes first, what goes second, and how you're going to apply them. So now the fun part is to take all these random little pieces and basically put them on your card. So I'm not going to show you all the details, but I am going to start. I think we'll start with the little teeny leaves that are underneath the little chickadee's body. Now I do know I'm going to 
probably print out the chickadee in a white paper and fussy cut him out and use my Copics and color him up. So I am going to do one more layer on top of this. But my leaves can be cut out and applied to the background first. So when you're doing your fussy cutting, you want to turn your paper, not your scissors. Not only is this easier on your hands and your wrist, but it's actually easier to cut out all your detail. Now, see, I haven't totally cut my leaves out. I've actually left part of his body. That's okay, because remember, I'm going to cover him up with a body layer. So I'm just going to use my fine tip glue here. This one is actually a bottle filled with uh, Ranger Multi Matte Medium. And I'm just going to use the tip to spread out my glue to ensure that my leaves stick down. You can actually apply it to the, the cut too, whatever works for you. And that's how you're going to go about it. And like I said, my chickadee layer is going to go over top so that line of green is not going to be seen in the end result. So I'll do a few more leaves and berries and then we'll go to our final card at the end. And if you want to remove the sticky from the back to make things easier, now depending on your particular adhesive, but I love ATG because I can literally just take my finger and pull it up off the back. And that'll make it easy, easier for uh, you because you're not gonna have everything stick to your hands or your scissors as well. So uh, I'm off to do some cutting and some gluing and I'll be with you in a few moments. I just wanted to show you a little bit of the process here. Uh, lots of dainty things, so lots of cutting, and that's okay. Um, before I went any further with my leaves, I actually colored in the branch because it's a lot easier to do it when everything's flat, not nubbly, because as you add layers, you add edges and things that you can touch with your marker, so it's a lot easier to do the coloring before you start adding the layers. So just a little tip, on with the show. All right, in another progress report, we're going to glue down our chickadee as we have done all of our berries and all of our leaves. Use the tip to spread things out here. And as I said, that green by the chickadee there is going to disappear. So I printed him out on some scrap white cardstock. The nice thing about having an image below with all of the details such as like the hair individual hairs on his head you don't have to cut them out because as long as you cut out the major part of his body those hairs are going to show underneath so that's another great aspect of not having to be too detailed in your cutting so i have one last step to add and that's our snow and our focal image will be finished and then we'll make a final card. I'll be with you in a few minutes. Alright, I wanted to show you how the liquid applique goes on here. I did take a white gel pen and just went into the really fine detail like the little teeny snow drip here and there and there and there because I didn't think I could get my tip in to the area to cover it up. So I did use my white gel pen to get in there and do the dirty work. So you don't need a lot of this stuff to make it activate and make it to look puffy. So you can use that uh, fine tip to push it around a little bit and get it into the areas that you can't get a lot into. So really easy peasy, I'm going to finish this up and then it has to, they recommend uh, leaving it overnight to dry but uh, I just dry it for maybe 20 minutes and then I take my heat tool to it and the magic begins and it becomes puffy.
And when that stage is ready, I'll show you what it looks like. So I've let our liquid applique dry on our image for a little while here. And I've preheated my heat gun and let's uh, take a look at what happens when you heat this up. And there we go, some nice puffy snow. All ready for a card front. So here's our final card. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you continue to follow the Power Poppy blog along. There's lots of great inspiration for all seasons. Thanks for joining me today and have a great week.